Welcome to Behind the Bass, where this week we're looking at White Wedding by Billy Idol off of his self-titled album, Billy Idol, from 1982. The basis on this is Phil Feet, and this is one of Billy Idol's most famous songs. Uh, you might also know Rebel Yell, uh, Dancing With Myself, Moni Moni, or uh, Blue Highway. Those are some of his most popular songs. Um, I'm trying something new with this one where I'm going more off the cuff instead of a full scripted behind the bass video that I've done for the previous ones. Uh, part of the reason is I feel like uh, this will take me a lot less time. Maybe the production quality is a little bit less, but you might enjoy the more, more natural personality rather than the scripted type of production I did before. Um, if you like that difference, please let me know. If you don't like the difference, please let me know. Um, I'm doing this all for you and I'm trying to get you all uh, more information that might be enjoyable or helpful for you. I figure this way is a quicker, more effective way for me to do that while also still doing it instead of not doing it at all. Because uh, those scripted videos, those would take a lot of time and effort and editing where I don't have the funds to hire an editor. So all of that was me, myself and I. So that's why I'm trying this new thing. Phil, he was with Billy Idol from 1981 to 1983. Wasn't with the band long. Uh, if you try to find live videos of Phil playing this song with Billy Idol, I wasn't able to find any. I know they played on the Dick Clark show, uh, American Bandstand in 1982. Billy Idol, he's had a lot of different bassists to play with him. Steve Webster from 83 to 85. Uh, Kenny Aronson from 86, 87. Phil Susan from 89, 90. Uh, Larry Seymour, 90 to 96, uh, Sasha Kristoff in 2000, and then Stephen McGrath from 2001. So uh, longest running bassist is Steve McGrath, or Stephen McGrath, but that's way after the prime of all of Billy Idol's hits. As a kid, the way Billy Idol came up on my radar was I'd listen to the classic rock station, Billy Idol would come on, and then I ended up buying uh, Vital Idol and uh, Rebel Yell. And so, yeah, there are a lot of different bases. If you look up uh, videos of Billy Idol playing this, there are lots of them out there. The different bases, they play it a little bit differently. Honestly, I didn't look at those a whole lot. Like a lot of some of the popular songs that I've covered, if they're played in Guitar Hero, the video game series, uh, there's this website where you can find out whether it's been the master recording or if it's not been the master. And this was one of the ones where the master recording was used. And you can find on YouTube a lot of times someone's ripped from the game, uh, the multi-tracks. I don't know how it's done, but they take the multi-track take whatever part they want and they upload it to YouTube so you can find the true isolated bass from the original studio recording. And so I found that for this song. So I know my notes are right. Plus it's easy to hear all the notes for the most part. There may be only a couple spots where it's like, does he play a quarter note or does he just do eighth notes all the way through? The isolated track really helps with that. A lot of those instances, what I do is I try to get what's accurate. Uh, what you can do is whatever feels right. Use your best judgment, do what feels right, what your audience will enjoy. But continuing on, the reason why I didn't use many of those videos that weren't Phil of the other bassists is because of that Guitar Hero isolated tracks that I found. Um, so I knew my notes were right, as I said. Uh, but then as far as the positioning goes, there are about three different ways that I found you could play this song. One way that you can play this song is with your pinky on the seventh fret of the E, your ring finger on the fifth fret of the A, and then your index finger on the fourth fret of the D. And it sounds like this. The way that you could play this is using second fret on the A, open D, second on the D, fourth on the D. Or you can do what I did in the tab, which you start on the 7th and then go to 10, 7, 9 for the main riff and you stay pretty much right about there. So the reason why I chose that is because I actually found an Instagram video of Phil. So I followed that for my tab. It also shows Phil playing his jazz bass with a pick. Uh, you can see uh, some other photos of Phil using a jazz bass and a pick. As far as videos of Phil playing, uh, wasn't really able to find a whole lot on YouTube. I did find one uh, with 
he was doing some kind of busking thing with a guy on a street and I don't know what the situation there was. Really couldn't find out much information about it, but it showed a jazz bass there. That's why I used my jazz bass for the song. Uh, I find the best way to emulate the tone is to do a little bit of palm muting. Uh, not a whole lot, but it helps get that um, tone you want, though it can be quite tricky to do. Last thing I want to mention is that the video that's on Phil's Instagram, he does a lot of that interpretation that's not exactly like the studio, but still gives the essence of it. Uh, the main difference that he does is on the chord changes, he would end up holding that first note as a quarter note instead of playing it as the driving eighth notes that the rest of the song does. Here's an example. like that. I definitely felt that in the song, so it's nice to know that it's not just me going crazy or making it up in my head, but uh, the original bassist also feels that too, even though it's not in the original recording. One more thing I wanted to mention is the tuning of the song. Although it is E standard, the E string is tuned down just a little bit. The A string is perfectly in tune, but the E is a few cents flat, so when you play it with your band, uh, use just the normal E standard tuning, but if you're playing along to the original and you want it to sound right, you'll drop that just a little bit on the E string only to get it sound right. So that is the tuning of the E string that I used for recording this song, so that when you play the riff, it matches up with the studio version properly. Remember to support the channel by ordering Sambo merch and signing up for Patreon. Rock on, and I'll see you next time.